This little thing wobbling away in my bench was designed for shop window displays. I think this came from a surplus company, but I'm not sure. But let me change the angle of the camera so you can actually see what this thing is doing. One moment, please. So it's solar powered and it's designed to have a display item stuck to the top of that little panel and it self oscillates. It starts a... Uh, it starts swinging in the window when the sun level, well, the display lighting level gets high enough and it just adds a bit of movement to the window display. But anyway, you know what's going to happen now. We're going to open it and see what's inside. Let's take a look at that right now. So I had to put this in a dark place because uh, every time I left it out, standing upright in an area that light could hit it, it's so sensitive it would get up to the level it would start making loud tapping noises, it would hit the end stop. Uh, it's very good. But interestingly, if you look in there, well, let me zoom down a bit. You'll see that it has a magnet either side of the coil. Now, it's got a bit more circuitry to allow it to start up. I think it's reminiscent of the, uh, the sort of like the cat paw type units with the cats with the waving paw. And it looks as though it's also designed to take a AAA cell. Now, this thing, I noticed that one this side is kind of open. Oh, there's a little catch down here. Spudger. Where's my spudger? Is this glued shut as well? I don't think it is glued shut. Well, that's good. It's coming apart. It is very old, so it wouldn't surprise me if it just disintegrated. Here's the bit we're interested in, the circuit board. And the pendulum mechanism with the magnets on either side, look as though they're glued in, it's squished out the back. It rocks on a couple of inverted V's, just a shape like that, so it can actually rock over the top. That's basically just to create a very low friction bearing. Okie dokie, I wonder if this sticky pad is still sticky because this has never been used. Eh, it's kind of sticky actually, yeah. It's actually managed to maintain its stickiness for many, many decades. Right, tell you what, this is a bit we're interested in, so I shall reverse engineer this. I think think, could be wrong here, I think this is just two connections to the coil. That's an, It does look like it's two connections to the coil. Okay, that's interesting. Right, I'll reverse engineer this and we can explore it. One moment, please. Okay, reverse engineering is complete. Here's the circuit board. Here's the circuitry on it. Let's explore. And they've got some really interesting features here, including a snubber network across the coil. The transistor positions all have four holes. Only three are populated, but it's really clever because it, if it means either the collectors in the middle or the base in the middle, well, basically speaking, no matter what the pinout of the transistor, by turning it round and shifting it back or forward in these holes, they can fit any transistor into this PNP position and this NPN position. They've left their options wide open. Um, the coil is wound on a plastic former with no core and I'm guesstimating that there might be 200 meters of wire in this it's a lot but it's very very thin wire and the inner winding that well it's just one single winding but the inner side of that winding just comes out and folds over the edge the other one to stop it unraveling, they've uh, used a soldering iron or something just to heat stake it in there. But when they've uh, mounted this, again by heat stake it, you can see one, two, three, the heat stake positions. They've brought the wires in with where these dotted lines are and just laid them across these pads and soldered them. And that's melted the solder um, and also melted the lacquer on the wire and made the connection. In this case, you can see what looks like a crack going across the circuit board. It's not. That is the wire that's been brought up from here, laid onto the solder pad, and they've just not bothered cutting it. They've just left the wire going across there. More information on the wire later. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just cut straight to the schematic. One other thing worth mentioning is that it does have battery contact positions for a positive a battery contact, a negative battery contact. The positive battery contact does have what could be a resistor or a diode position. I think it's more like a resistor because it's going to emulate the uh, solar panel and just limit the charge onto a capacitor um, while th when this is actually pulsing. Um, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, it might make sense when I show you the schematic. I'll bring that in right now. The schematic. Let's see if I can make a complete mess of trying to describe what's happening in this because a lot happens at once and it happens very quickly. 
Here is the solar panel and it charges up this capacitor. That was quite annoying because when I was trying to actually stop it moving, uh, even with the solar panel covered, it just kept kicking it because it has a self-start feature. Now, if you've got the little noddy head type uh, solar figures or the dancing flower figures, they use a very similar circuit to this in some of the older ones, but the modern ones just use a blob chip and a capacitor, and uh, that blob chip contains a lot. I think it's Electron Update actually decapped one of them, and it looked as though it might have been a microcontroller. You can use a microcontroller for this by using the input, one just one pin, uh, which someone has done with a PIC microcontroller. One pin is a input and an output. It senses using the analog to digital converter function. It can sense the low voltage in the coil and then it can actually kick the coil by converting it to an output. Quite a clever bit of software. But that's not done here. This is all discrete components. So you could build this from scratch yourself. There is the solar panel. There is a reservoir capacitor, 470 microfarad, 10 volt. And then there's a PNP transistor and an NPN transistor. The PNP transistor does two things. It switches the current through the coil. And notice that to protect against the collapsing field producing the back EMF spike, the, the flyback spike, it, it has a snubber network across it. Previous circuits I've looked at just have a capacitor across it, but this one actually has a snubber, 390 ohm and 100 nanofarad capacitor just to clamp that voltage spike, just to protect the transistor. But when this transistor turns on, it also effectively drags this line positive and that also uh, via this capacitor takes the base of this transistor positive. So let's try and work out what happens from scratch. You apply power, the voltage starts rising, there's a potential divider providing a slight bias to the base of this NPN transistor. As soon as it reaches about 0.6 volts and it is charging this capacitor in the process, as soon as it reaches that, this transistor starts turning on just very slightly, but when it does, it actually diverts current and pulls the base of this PNP transistor to the zero volt rail. Just And it, initially it's just very gently via this uh, resistor. But as soon as that happens and this starts turning on, the voltage here raises and it's coupled via the capacitor and it starts turning this transistor on harder and it causes an avalanche effect in a loop that both these transistors suddenly turn on with a spike and that gives the coil a good pulse. Then... When this capacitor, which determines the time of that, when it's basically taken as much charge, it's basically this side is charged positive with respect to that side, no more current is transferred through, and then this the circuit uh, turns off in the same way that it turned on, and uh, then this end is effectively pulled down to the negative rail via the coil, and that uh, then restarts the uh, timing cycle of this capacitor charging via these resistors until it reaches that. But something can skew that. If the magnet is swinging by, it can induce current in this coil that then uh, triggers it prematurely. It just pushes it over the edge just as it was actually getting to the point it would self-trigger. So it can just self-trigger to get started, uh, to get that pendulum just swinging initially. But as soon as it's swinging, the swing of the pendulum actually bypasses that and it, it determines the timing that it's going to get the pulse. And it's interesting to note that the uh, magnets on the other side here, for perfect balance, so normally you'd have the magnet underneath swing over the coil, but because they've got it... Um, actually swinging past it. If I bring in the magnetic field sensor and I push the button on it to turn it on, uh, this shows the south pole and this side, this side shows the north pole. So effectively, the coil is being excited from both sides, but the magnetic kick also affects both magnets simultaneously. Now here's the question though. Does it detect the magnet approaching and give it a quick attraction, or does it detect it leaving and give it a quick push? I don't know. That's the sort of thing that, to test that, to experiment with your setup, you could just swap the winding uh, orientation. But the nice thing about this is it is just a single winding. So I measured this winding at 700 ohms. And uh, I measured the diameter of the wire at 0 0.08 millimetres, which equates to 40 AWG. Now, I used my most accurate calipers for that, but uh, it's hard to say for sure um, how accurate that is at such a small size. It's pushing the limit. But if it was 40 AWG, then for the 700 ohms, that would be 200 metres of wire. And it is super thin, so it could feasibly have that amount of wire on it. It is 
hair leg, uh, extremely thin indeed. So easy to break that wire when you're actually working with it, which is frustrating if you're winding a coil and it snags and breaks the wire. But there we have it. Uh, it's a classic circuit, not terribly new. I've featured one in the past, which was the original um, nodding flower type effect. And uh, it used a very similar circuit. The only real major difference was that it didn't have this resistor in series that capacitor, but it was more or less the same, but using different transistors and slightly different component values. But that's it. Um, the pendulum circuits are fascinating because it takes so little power to actually kick that pendulum. It's a, it's a quite fun to actually build them. But there we have it. That is the swinging advertising sign shaker for shop windows. Very interesting circuit.